Hey, what's going on? So in today's video, we are gonna be replacing the color wheel in the Optoma HD27. Uh, if you've been with me for a while, you'll know that I recently just got a new bulb in. I did a video on that. For a while, I've noticed that uh, there was this issue with the video. It looked like it was getting uh, compression artifacts. So what is actually happening, uh, at least in my instance, is that there's this little piece of what looks like black tape, marking tape, on the color wheel itself. And apparently after a long period of time, the tape crumbles off and uh, so then the little sensor can't determine the position of the color wheel. So we tried to fix this. My wife and I took it apart, tried to put a little piece of electrical tape on it. It actually worked for about 20 minutes. And then for whatever reason, uh, the electrical tape either fell off or got caught uh, the projector shut down and was not happy with me about that. So then we were like, well, let's just try to to use a, a permanent marker. And we marked up the color wheel, put it back in and it worked a little bit. And after a short amount of time, like it started fluttering and the colors were uh, were incorrect. So then we're like, well, let's just buy one. I'm going to share with you how I figured out how to get one a little bit later in this video. All right, well, let's get into it. You're getting very sleepy. You will leave a comment and subscribe. <laughs> I just always wanted to do that. Doesn't this kind of remind you of like a, uh, one of those, this is the this is the color wheel uh, that I got. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna remove the bulb. It'll be a little warranty sticker that you have to break through. You don't need to pull the screw all the way out. You can just do that and then this'll pop out like so. And then we are into the bulb here. So there's a little tab up here that if you pull that towards you, you can should be able to get this this out, which this will help you remove it. Uh, then you just remove the, the screw right here, as well as don't forget to uh, remove this part over here. It might be snug in there pretty good. I sometimes take a little screwdriver and just kind of give it a little help to pop it, it out like so. Don't forget, you should probably be wearing safety glasses. Uh, your bulb could explode. Then the bulb should come out. And we'll go ahead and set that aside. Uh, one of the things that I did is I got a little pad uh, to, because I'm gonna, you're gonna have to flip your projector upside down in order to take out the screws. There are one, two, three, four, five, six screws that have to come out. This one in the middle will have a, a warranty thing over it. Uh, so let's. Let's get those screws out. This is a Phillips head. You can use this lamp cover as a screw tray. Okay, so once we have all six screws removed, then we flip it back on this side. This is probably the scarier part. Um, basically what you have to do is get a small flat head screwdriver here. I think I'm gonna start on the other side. This is where I typically start from on this this side here, the longer side, and you just kind of work your way up under it. And then once you get up, you kind of just pop up and then you work your way over, maybe another inch over and just sort of pop it around. I actually haven't broken any of these. Um, it gets harder as you get towards the back. I will say after you take it apart, it gets easier the second or third time. <laughs> but so uh, yeah, just, kind of work like I am and just go slow. This is the most difficult area right here. I would wait till last for it and then kind of work back over the front here. There we go. There we go. And then this last one, you can actually see the clip under here. And if, if you, you if you can't get it, you can actually put your finger in there or your screwdriver inside and you might be able to pop it out. But yeah, the idea is to get it to, to go. It's always harder to do this on camera. There we go, I got it. So then this whole top part will come off. Uh, you know, fortunately there's no wires or anything attached to this, which it just makes our lives so much easier. Color wheel is right in this area. This area that encapsulates the, the bulb has to come up out. Okay, so next we have to remove three screws. There's one right here. 
Uh, there's another one right here, and then there's one back here. And that allows this, this lamp, I'm gonna call it the lamp housing, and the fan uh, to come up out of, out of there. You'll know which ones they are because they're, they're all connected to this black plastic. Oh wait, I forgot, I actually broke that one. And then this one back here, well, come out. So then this part back here, this should just lift up out. Be very careful that there's wires hooked to this, but it should just rotate back off. You can lay it right, right there and then you'll have this open area to work with, which allows you to get right at the color wheel, which is right here. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to disconnect this white ribbon cable that's right here. And in order to do that, it, it you just have these, you take these two, your two fingernails, and you just slide these out. You can see this tape isn't sticking anymore because I've had this apart, and then the ribbon cable uh, will just will just come out. You don't need to worry about this cable yet because we're just going to take the screw out for him. And if we remove this screw, that's the electronic eye that actually watches the color wheel spin. Set the screw aside for that. That's a shorter screw, by the way. Okay, so then we take this part out and just lay it aside. There's going to be a total of five screws that were actually more than that, I think, that we're going to have to to remove. Probably the easiest way to do it is to just remove the ones that are uh, connected to the silver uh, metallic part of the assembly. So uh, I'm going to remove this one down here at the bottom. It's a small one too. And then over on this side of it, there would actually be one right here, but again, I broke that during um, some of my attempts to take this apart. I'm sorry if this is not, apologize if this is not the best footage, it's hard for me to get in there. Okay, so um, that one and then this one here will come out. That's another small one. And then there's one right here. This is another hard one to see. Uh, it's gonna be I can get a little bit better shot for that. Uh, it's right here. It's kind of weird because it goes into metal, but it's got uh, part of this this uh, darker black plastic all around it. So you have to remove that one, another small screw, and then I think it'll come out. Yeah, so now it comes out. I'm gonna to try to show you uh, right now which ones I removed. I removed this one here. I removed this one over here. And then this one, uh, this one right here. Okay, so that that's what holds this whole unit together. And then there's two more screws to connect this black plastic part, uh, which holds the color wheel from this part. Uh, you have to be kind of careful because depending on, you to, when you pull this out, you could put little scratches on the color wheel. Uh, if you do, it's probably not gonna be the end of the world uh, because the light's pretty diffuse at the point where it's going through the color wheel. It's not actually in focus. But uh, yeah, just try to avoid scratching the color wheel at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these at this point. These are more of like a metal so style screw. So they're gonna have a more coarse thread. The other ones went into plastic and these ones are going into metal. Okay, and so then just very gingerly wiggle out the color wheel and there you have the color wheel. Uh, so this is the part I was mentioning to you earlier. Do you notice how that looks like I don't know, it's almost like a cyan, a yellow, a pink, and an orange. Totally looks different than, if you if you look for this on Amazon, which I will provide links down in the description so that you can find an affordably priced color wheel. Uh, it, none of these mar are marked for the HD27, which was confusing. Uh, but what you will notice is if you, if you shine light through this way, the colors actually change. So that's one of the things. So go ahead and show you that now. So if you look through it now, you'll notice that the colors are different when the light's going through it. So yeah, colors you wanna look for when you're ordering one. But again, I will put a link down in the description of the appropriate one that I ordered. Okay, so the very last thing that you have to do is to take off these three flathead screws and then the color wheel will come right out. So I think these, these look pretty much the same. 
you can see here on the new color wheel that it has that that black marking in order to put this back in uh, you feed the ribbon cable through like that with the the little data connectors pointing up and then as you pull it through it should bring the screw holes into position so that you'll have the ability to put those three screws back in hey eric from the future do you have any advice for us on uh the color wheel and what to do do we, do we make any mistakes yes actually don't forget to transfer the bushings otherwise the color wheel is going to make this horrible buzzing noise you're not going to like it thanks eric from the future no problem also don't forget bitcoin 7 a.m friday do this all right see you later eric from the past all right so uh what he was referring to is you see these three bushings uh these are basically to cut down on the vibration they're uh, stuck on here with some type of adhesive, so you just gotta peel them off and then transfer them over here. All right, so now we just have to put it back in here very carefully and then put back in those two screws that we removed out previously. These are the ones with the fine thread because it's plastic going into metal. All right, so those are in, and now we can drop it in and put in the screws that go from metal into plastic. There's four of those, and they're the shorter screws that you're gonna have uh, in your screw collection. It just drops right into this, this area here. It should go pretty easy. Find its position. If you put in the long screws, it's gonna cause them to crack. I think that's what happened to me the first time I did this. You know, it seems like if you break one, you'll probably be okay, but it's just better not to break any if you can help it. At this point, you might as well go ahead and reconnect the color wheel sensor. That's this thing right here. Make sure you have it turned so that the sensor is pointing down just set it in place with a screw. Don't over tighten it, but you make sure it's not loose and wiggling. It should be, should be pretty snug right there. And then we can just rotate this part back down and it should slide easy into, easily into place. And then don't forget to align this wire just above the color wheel. And then there's three screws uh, that hold this into place. Don't forget to reconnect the color wheel ribbon cable. Pins will go down towards the circuit board. So if you see these, these pins right here, those go down towards the circuit board. And just locks in place. Seems like I lost my tape. So I'm just gonna put some standard electrical tape all right before snapping this back together you can actually just verify that your zoom will work make sure it's positioned properly and then just snap it back into place just by going around it it'll snap back in place and then i just kind of go around it and check to make sure all the all the snaps are snapped correctly and then we'll put our six screws back in the bottom Okay, so the lamp, the trick to the lamp is really just alignment. There's two, there's guide pins up here at the top. Um, I always do those first. I get those guide pins in there and then I use the Phillips screwdriver to lock it in place. And then once it's locked in place, you can just push this handle down and it'll Get that and then don't forget to connect the power uh the power doesn't matter i don't think polarity wise but it should it should be pretty obvious how it goes in there okay so then very last step is to put this on and then we'll be able to go test it all right guys so we're out here in the living room i actually did not film the first initial startup uh because we had some we had some problems with with getting the projector to turn on 
uh, one of the things that uh, you have to be very careful of is whenever you're mounting the new collar wheel and, and inserting the three bushings, make sure that they seat down inside correctly. If they aren't fully seated, then the collar wheel, it will spin up and then it will shut off. You know, you have to have the index and the collar wheel tightened down and everything has to be aligned in order for the thing to work. So that was one glitch that we ran into. But ever since then, uh, after taking it apart and putting it back together, it's been running great. It's been over two weeks now. No longer seeing any more of the artifacts. So uh, anyways, check this out. Hey Google, turn off the living room light. Got it, turning the living room off. All right, here we go. So, so this was a YouTube video that I was watching where I first noticed the color wheel issues, uh, particularly there in that, that field, grassy, snow covered area, there was uh, like what looked like artifacts. And, and I'm sure there's compression there that we our human eyes just not able to pick up on. And uh, what was happening is because the color wheel was just slightly out of sync for us that the colors were wrong and it exaggerated the look of it. So if you're getting that, um, that might be the issue uh, is that your color wheel is just starting to go bad. Uh, if you're if you're noticing the fluttering, uh, obviously you've got a bad color wheel. All right, so I hope that I was able to help you. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach me down in the comments. Don't forget that I have links in the description. Uh, to help you find uh, the color wheel that will work for you. Anyways, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And we'll see you in the next one.